Okay, welcome to part 10 of Part in the Elemental Shield Sonic 1. I was hoping this would be the final part, but it doesn't look like it's going to be. Because I've done some thinking, I've agreed, yeah, I'm going to be doing the icon, the shield monitor icon idea from earlier. Where it's going to cycle between the three shields, and which depend when which icon is shown when you bust open the monitor, you get a different shield. But, well, I think we've had enough two hour parts, so... Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep things short. Give each one its own part, and that'll be the next part. In this part, we're going to be focusing on fire shield, elemental shield in general, immunities. So I figured out which, what that um, that platform in marble zone is—the one that catches fire when you step on it. Now the way I figured it out is probably worth explaining. So this is Son level. It's pretty much the Sonic level editor right now. Has been for a while. And. Uh, I suppose the way you use it is a little complicated because you don't just like click on the ROM or anything, no, the disassembly has to support it and you have to choose the right ini file, ignore the rev001. So yeah, I just chose Marble Zone. Just scroll over to the object you're looking for, this is right here. It's object 2f with subtype 15. So I took a look at the code for that, object 2f, and um. Yeah, it's subtype, I suppose, is anded with F, so it chops off the top digit, it just has 5, come down to 5. Um, here we go. Keep scrolling and you see it spawns a fire object. So I came to the object pointer file, grass fire, grass fire, and you can see it's 35. And indeed, it's just a dedicated fire object, so... I've added that to the list, and in this part we're going to be making uh, Sonic immune to these various things. And then of course I have to test it because I want to be thorough. So, where do we start? It's probably best to just check how Sonic 3 does it again. So I believe the function is called touch response. And we need to look for code that checks um, the shield react SST. I don't really see it yet. Hmm, <laughs> fancy that. Anyway. Ah no, maybe I scrolled past it. Let's just try again. So shield. For the sake. Here we go. Touch check hair. Oh, right, I get it. So it reads the state of secondary, then ands it with the shield react, and if any bits have survived, then it means Sonic's immune to it. Okay. And then no other references to this. Right, insta shield logic. Yeah, apparently this is what we're looking for. Alright. So all it does is abort the check hat function. Well, I mean, is it even a function? I suppose it's more of a branch, but that's irrelevant. So as you can see, it's the one right here. Hang on, 10? Ah, oh, whatever. So yeah, enemy, special, and check hat. This code should be in Sonic 1. More or less unmodified. So... Uh, 
enemy special check hair. Alright. So, again, let's just diff with Sonic 3. Hmm. Notably, ref notably there's Catacular logic in here. I suppose it must be a hard-coded bad neck or something. So... Is Sonic Invincible, if not Branch? And that's all the way down here. Right, what reference is this? Because Check Hat 1 and Check Hat 2 are the same thing in Sonic 1, but maybe we need to split it. It only seems to be used for whatever the hell this is. Insta Shield. If not Insta Shield, do you have. Hmm. <laughs> uh, whatever. This player. I'm just curious, is this trying to account for some kind of edge case? It's not always a good idea to just remove code without knowing what the hell it's there for. Like, yeah, if you have an immunity, then skip. If you have a shield... What? Oh, right, the bounceable bit. Right. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what this is trying to do. <sighs> we, we did add deflecting in the last part. And this isn't that code. So why is it doing that? I mean, it could be insta-shield related, but I'm not completely sure. Okay, maybe I'm just misreading it. So if you don't have a shield, you come here. Then it checks if you double jump in. Yeah, if you're not... So yeah, if you're... If you're doing an insta-shield attack, is basically what it's asking, and the thing can be deflected, then deflect it. But then you have... Actually, what's this for? Ah. Just hypersonic stuff. Yeah, then we have this one, where if you are invincible, or have a shield, come here. Are you immune? If you are, whatever, jump. If not, though, if you're not immune, but you do have a shield, then you come here, check if it can be deflected. I really don't get what this code's doing. Nope, I don't get it. So, sod it, moving on. So we just need some logic that determines if you have yeah, an element of shield, an elemental shield, then we need to just hard code logic that corresponds to each of these various objects. Now if I recall, actually I could be wrong, because in the last part we had trouble with like the crab meat projectile being part of the crab meat. This is a dedicated object, that's dedicated, that's dedicated, that's probably dedicated, dedicated, dedicated. I'm not sure about the lava fall, so let's take a peek at that object and see what it's doing. So lava guy is the dash guy is a produce, producer. Object 4D, Lava Guy is a Lava Fall. Okay, right, so that's just the producer. This is what we're looking for. It has a speed. It spawns another one. What?
Okay, but looking around, it does seem to me that this 4D is the object I'm looking for because it sets its co collision type. Nothing else here does. So, yeah, it seems to be a standalone object. So, let's come here and start hard coding this. Unlike earlier, we can use maybe a table to figure this out. Been a while since I've done one of these in assembly. So yeah, we're just gonna jot down each number. Let's sort them. Okay. Oh yeah, we do need to do it for the lightning shield as well, but for now let's just do it for the fire shield. So, we have 14... Nah, what am I doing? Now to be fair, the flamethrower might spawn another object, so let's see what that one does. Okay... It doesn't appear to be a sub-object, it just does it by itself, okay. Right. So if I recall, doing a for loop or a while loop, whatever you want to call it, in 68k assembly, it's a little goofy. Because the loop counter like terminates once the value underflows, I think. Which means the loop counter has to be a minus one what it should be, but it doesn't stop at zero, it stops below zero. So I need a free address register. What can I use? Okay, I can use A2 because that's used for calculating the hitbox and then it's just not used after that. So now in here, we can just read a byte from this table Dump it in a register. I'll oh, bet, yeah, I think we can just do a comparison on it, on it directly. Is A1 the object we're looking at? Yeah, seems to be. A1 is the enemy, A0 is Sonic. So yeah, we're comparing this to that. And uh, if they're equal, then... Okay. Just do that. Of course, this is going to work for everything all the time, regardless whether you have a shield or not. So we need to only run this code if Sonic has a fire shield. Uh, 
Okay, I don't think we'll I don't think we need to test V shield, just a V shield type. Okay, that should get the job done. And then of course we have the one thing the lightning shield makes you immune to. So I don't know what that object is, let's just go to Scrap Brain and find out. Oh by the way, while we're here, we can address that one hang on a tick. Yeah, there we go. So now the object's like hidden behind everything. You remember those um invisible wall objects I mentioned? Look, here's one. So you see, how the heck is it an Eggman? No, it isn't. Hmm, I guess some levels uh, object definition's a little buggy. But yeah, so while we're here, let's just go through the whole level and change every single one of these back to what they should be to prevent any glitches coming up later on, because as I said in the last part, it's not a problem in Sonic 1, but in ROM hacks, when the contents of the ROM file get shuffled around, it can lead to the screen just glitching out when one of these things appears. So... Here we go. Invisible solid block. It'd be really nice if I knew what its ID was. Hello? Oh, I know. Drag and drop. So it's 71. So we just delete that, come here and change 26 to 71. Oh, would you look at that? So yeah, now we just need to repeat that for every monitor. So... Ah, look at, look at all these bloody things. So again, 71. And as you can see, like I said, the subtype does correspond to the invisible wall object because, as you can see, the dimensions are perfect. Yeah, it's funny with all the revisions and re-releases Sonic 1 has. I don't think they ever fixed this bug. They probably did in, like, Sonic Jam. Just because of that thing's actually a port and, well... And they did create easy and normal difficulty object placements. So, yeah, maybe they did. As you can see, they didn't mess that one up. I really don't know how the hell this issue appeared. Maybe it's some kind of copy-paste error. Maybe some like, team didn't have a proper level editor and they just, I don't know, did it in a text editor, did it manually. Can't really say for sure. It's just, how do you make a mistake like this? <laughs> what? Wow. I didn't know Sonic 1 actually relied on the level, like, wrapping. <laughs> because that, you, you're stood on top of that when you get down here. That's a weird detail. Alright, cool. That's that sorted out. So, back to what I was doing. So, the Electro... Electrocure. It is 6E. Okay then. Oh, right underneath the flamethrower. So when it shocks, it sets its animation and modifies its own collision type. So yeah, it's just object 6E we have to worry about here. Now lucky for us, because it's only one object, we don't need a table to do this for the electric shield. Let's just duplicate this logic. So 
So if Sonic has a lightning shield and the object he's colliding with is the electrocutor, then don't get hurt. And that should do it. So actually, let's quickly do something. Over the last, what, you know, 10 parts, getting a Dan monitor to test with is just, just a minute, it's just a pain in the ass. So I'm thinking, how about we quickly hack in a little logic so that you can spawn a shield whenever you want? I'm just thinking what the best area to do it is. Hmm. Let's put it in Sonic's jump logic. So let's say you jump and you hold a particular button and it will spawn you with a certain shield. So let's say you jump and you hold maybe the C button. Then depending on what direction you're holding on the D-pad, you get a different shield. So say you hold like, sort it, down. You get bubble shield, hold nothing, get fire shield, hold up electric shield. Something like that. Yeah, we're just going to tack the logic on right here. But of course, we're only interested in if Sonic is holding C. So. Here we go. Just skip to the end of the code if Sonic isn't holding the C. Then we need to check up, down, and neutral. Hmm. Okay. Well, actually, we don't want to read press because we're going to be checking if we're holding a direction on the D pad, so. What is that called? Ah, oh, come on. Right, it's just called hold. So if these are both true, then... Now we need to go back to the... Oh, I don't even have it open. The code that spawns a shield and just copy it in here. To be fair, maybe I could have added like uh, the shield monitor, like individual shield monitors to debug mode, but eh, prefer doing it this way.
And that should do it, hopefully. Why am I not surprised? Okay. Here I am not following my own advice. Yeah, remember how the 68k can't do things on odd addresses? Yeah, you wanna just... Always use an even macro to make sure your tables end on an even address. <laughs> Oops. Oh, come on. You know, it's weird. If I recall, the 68k was uh, unique for having, what was it, an orthogonal instruction set? Meaning you can do pretty much anything to anything. But when it comes to comparisons, you can't do this. And I don't know why. So we're going to have to just do it like right in x86, not x86, z80 assembly. And move to a temporary register. Ooh. Like really? Motorola? That wasn't an opcode for comparing two memory addresses like that with an increment. Maybe CMPM, but I don't think that allows increments. Oh, for banana's sake. You know, sometimes I swear I spend more time correcting code than actually writing the damn stuff. <laughs> really? You couldn't spare the extra two letters? Button done. This is why I absolutely despise. Um, short naming schemes. Be verbose, god damn it. Symbol undefined is flashing. Right. You know, I swear I don't have this many syntax errors when I'm writing C. Alright, finally. So I spent so long doing that, I don't even remember what I was meant to do. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go through the game, just check that all of these objects have proper immunities. So, see you then. Well, good to know that the, sh the code I added is actually working. You can spawn whatever shield you want. So let's spawn a fire shield. And check out whether the immune is working. Okay. The lava hair object doesn't hurt you if you have a fire shield. Does it hurt you if you have an electric shield? Yes, it does. Bubble shield. Yes, it does. But not fire shield. That's good. And yeah, I can still get hit by the caterpillar despite it having weird code. Like, you know, you saw that earlier. It kind of hooked into the... The uh, collision occurred in a weird way. Don't know why. Alright, let's try this out. Okay. Lightning shield. Bubble shield. Yep. All good. Alright, let's just check those off the list. So... That's good. And that's good. Oops. Just thinking what the next thing I'm going to bump into is. The lava wall ain't coming up. I don't think there are any fireballs down here. So I'll just, yeah, cut the video here and come back when I find some it. Okay, so there are fireballs here. Yep, yeah, seems to be immune to it. Not with the... Oops. There we go. Any time today? Well, did I despawn it? God. Right. Electric shield is not immune. Bubble shield, 
obviously not immune. Yeah, alright. So that's one more to check off the list. Presumably that also means... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the code between these ones that shoot them out of lava and the ones that shoot them out of walls is the same. So in Act 2, I think... Is this Act 2? I've lost track of where the hell I even am. Point is, uh, the starlight ones that fire shoot fireballs out of the walls and the marble zone things that shoot fireballs out of walls should also... Uh, no longer damage Sonic if he has a fire shield. Okay, we have um, some lava falls here. I'm immune to them. Good. Let's try electric shield, just to be sure. Yeah, good. That's working. Here are these. Yeah, here are the fireball launchers. Immune, of course. And then down here is the lava wall. So let's see if being immune to it does or doesn't make the game just freak out. Hmm. So it functions as a solid wall. That's good to know. So you can be immune to it, and it's and but you will kind of, Oh wow, the sprite limit is freaking out. <laughs> right. So that seems to be working. Another one to check off the list. Alright, that just leaves the boss and the scrap brains on flamethrowers. I'm just going to jump ahead to the boss. Alright, so we're at the boss. So there could be like two or three different types of fireball to test here. The one that he drops, the one that spreads, and the one that comes out of the ground. So I'm immune to those two. Cool. And I'm immune to that. Not immune to that. And... Get out of the way, you bastard. Damn it. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, good. Well, that's enough testing, I suppose. So, definitely immune to the boss. And now for Scrap Brain Zone. Alright, we've got some flamethrowers right here. And I do appear to be immune to them. Right, that's good to know. Now to just hunt down those electric thingies. Alright, here's one. Yep. Cool, the one electric attack in the game, and Sonic is indeed immune to it. Alright, I swear there was one more thing I wanted to check, but it's escaping me. Alright, well, that ticks those off. I believe that means we're done here for now. So, actually, yeah, since I'm going through and testing absolutely everything, I should also double check these changes on the last part. So I know the bomb projectiles are properly deflected. What about the Orbinor? What about the Newton, the Buzz Bomb, and the Crab Meat? So while we're here, because it's probably a pretty short part, I mean, let's take a look. Yeah, pretty short. Let's just go through and double check that our changes are correct from the last part. Using my favourite shield, of course, because why not? It's not like different shields deflect different projectiles, like that works correctly. So remember, these two are a shared object, so if I did this wrong, then I can bounce the crab meat away. But no, it just hurts me properly. Good. I right, now need to find a Newton that shoots bullets. I mean, technically, it's the, it uses the same projectile as a Buzz Bomber, I think, so... I kind of already know that it works, but just to be sure... Trouble is, I don't really recall where the Newtons are in Green Hill. I think they might all be on the bottom route, and I never go down there. Because really, it's been a while since I've been shot in the face by a Newton. Oh, there they are. Cool. And yeah, those are bounced properly. 
Right, that's the top three done. Oh, and also the bomb. That just leaves the Orbinaut. So there are two Orbinauts, one in Starlight and one in Labyrinth. The Starlight one doesn't throw projectiles at you, but the one in Labyrinth does. So I guess I'll just uh, fast forward to when I actually found one. And just to double check, yeah, you can no longer pick up air bubbles. Good. Yeah, I think there's an Orbinaut around here. Here we go. Okay. Cool, even not being launched off the Orbinaut, I can still bounce them away. Oh, cool, I can bounce those away too. Looks kind of goofy though. Eh, whatever. Probably happens in Sonic 3 every now and again too. Hang on a tick. I never, I never wrote the gargoyle thing in here. Hmm, whatever. Alright, well that's the gargoyle thing confirmed too. So that just leaves the Starlight Zone Orbinaut. Now where the heck am I going to find one of those? Uh, and just to reaffirm, bomb. Yeah, properly deflected. Well, okay, this is interesting. Check this out. Now, I don't know whether this is a good or bad thing because um, they're technically not projectiles, you know, it never throws them at you. But then again, I swear in Sonic 3, you, there are Orbinauts like that too when you just kind of dissolve their, their little their spike balls. I feel like I should change that. So, let's just double check in a level editor. Because if it works for one Orbinaut, then why doesn't it work for the other? Unless they're just completely different objects. So it's 60. Okay. Yeah, bog standard Orbinaut. I must be checking a different subtype, maybe? So if 60 and routine 8. Okay, and routine 8 is when the all when it when the when it gets flung at you. Now if move orb it gets incremented by two when Orbinaut angry, directly under the Orbinaut, fling, fire. Hmm. Okay, I could change it, but remember how back in Labyrinth Zone I stood near an Orbinaut and bounced to its projectiles before I thought they left the Orbinaut? According to this code, no. I, I just happened to be at the perfect position to bounce them away the second the Orbinaut released them. And what I was worried about was if you bounce an orb away from an Orbinaut before it has a chance to fire them at you, then the Orbinaut will run this line of code. It will override the X velocity, meaning the, the orb will bounce one way, then when the Orbinaut tries to throw it, it will throw it. So it will just zigzag across the screen. And uh, I don't want to invoke that behaviour. And again, this is practically just an enemy with decoration surrounding it. You know, it's like an average enemy. You walk into it, you get hurt. What do you expect? And not to mention, I do think that's part of the challenge. The Orbinaut is an enemy you can't hurt, really. So, I think I'm just going to leave that the way it is. So, I think that's it for this part. I've added uh, elemental shield immunities. A bunch of fire attacks and the one light uh, electric attack in the game. So, can't believe we're at ten parts now, jeez. In the next part, we're going to hopefully wrap things up. We're going to change the icon, do some off-screen play testing, and then finally bring this damn series to a close. So, I think that's it for now. 
Nope, I can't think of anything. Alright, toodles.